Good morning, folks. Today is Cat and my 10 year anniversary, and the journals are giving us gifts to celebrate. This morning, we will see the landfall of the hurricane in Florida, a solar storm at Mars, and three excellent articles in the solar and galactic astrophysics realm. We're starting with our star, and while solar wind and geomagnetic conditions are quiet, we've got activity building on the surface of the sun. Several areas had minor plasma destabilizations and small flares and outburst events. No significant CMEs fired our way, but the activity we saw appears to have been triggered by a sun-diving comet coming in from the south. We have seen this several times where the dumping of material in causes increased activity on the surface fields, which is also a nod to the material dumped in by the galactic current sheet as we go through a galactic magnetic reversal. But before we talk about that, here's Hurricane Nicole making landfall in Florida. At this early hour, the damage reports are just beginning to trickle in. News coverage is expected to be widespread on that event today. Next, we're going to head to Mars, where the August uptick in space weather had a much stronger effect there than it had on Earth. Biggest blast was aimed its way and resulted in the largest energetic particle flux seen by MAVEN. Humans on their way to Mars would have been pretty much cooked if Elon was a few years further ahead in his goals. Last night we had another Q&A video and veteran observers are already having a chuckle at the comments section, where it's painfully obvious how many people don't watch the Earth Disaster playlist before they comment. Maybe I should mention it once in a while. All Q&A videos are part of that playlist as well, by the way. And we're off to a stellar dimming. The main point here is that it wasn't circumstellar material blocking the light. It was an actual change in the brightness of the star. They say these intrinsic dimming events are far more common than astronomers originally believed, which is also a nod to the potential for our sun to have a similar dimming when the ongoing galactic magnetic reversal hits its peak. The galactic current sheet is where that reversal occurs, and it's hitting our solar system now. We are moving from the north magnetic sector to the south as this wave passes, and this is vastly different than the galactic equator, which actually has no effect on magnetism without the current sheet sector separation. And yet another piece of evidence from the Voyager missions comes into play today, as the turbulence they see cannot be accounted for due to collisional damping of the expected background turbulence. I wonder what is causing that extra turbulence that Voyager notices. Not really. Anyway, to further the galactic current sheet evidence, which is already enormous, we've got another paper here on the Parker instability and magnetic flux tubes within the galactic sheet. These are two features you only see in such wavy, rippling current sheets, always surrounding a spinning magnet like a star or galactic nucleus. The flux tubes at the galactic level are not unlike those in the similar Sun's current sheet as we look at the endless spiral, which string outward through that sheet and help drive particle flux at up to relativistic speeds. And the Parker instability they mention, by the way, takes a flat disk and quickly turns it into this, a wavy, rippling current sheet. And we're back to here. We greatly appreciate your support. Folks, watch that playlist. It is still answering about 99% of the questions being asked in the comments and the emails. It's in our books as well. And if you have even more questions, anything from the science to your current location expectations in the disaster, hop on a one-on-one -on -one call with me and we'll break it down together. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.